Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly for pricing, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the most talked about watch of 2019. I'm not going to lie, it was controversial. Designed to replace the Jules Audemars dress watch line, this is the Code 1159, this is the chronograph model. This was AP's proposal for what an AP dress watch should look like heading into the third decade of the 21st century. I believe this watch is a little bit misunderstood, mostly because the online soldier shots that launched with the model were so unflattering. There's a lot more to this watch, and you can really only appreciate it when you see it with all three dimensions exposed. So let's start with the basics, this white gold example with the original monotone 2019 black lacquer dial. It is 12.7 millimeters thick, it is 50 millimeters from lug to lug, and it has a very modern 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. You always know you're looking at a modern watch, even when it's a vintage re-edition or interpretation, when you have a broad spacing between the lugs. Modern watches are usually over 20 millimeters, vintage watches almost never are. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see the watch is well approaching the limit of what's possible. It's not terribly thick, it looks thick, but at under 13 millimeters, millimeters, it's not. It does fit underneath cuffs. The bigger issue is going to be the lug span. At 50 millimeters, I'm going to recommend this watch for wrists of 15 centimeters circumference or greater. And you can see on my 16 centimeter wrist, it's pushing right out to the edge. Now, the strap is a high-end piece. Large rectangular scale alligator leather in matte black on the top. Matte black monotone stitch, folded edge, a little bit of stuffing or bolstering to give it a meaty volume, and then gator, small round scale on the bottom. Small round scale on the bottom, rectangular on the top, double gator is what a lot of high-end brands are doing today to create more luxurious and longer lasting straps. They cost a bit more, but on a watch like this, it's almost a rounding error. Now the buckle's nicely made and it's bespoke to the model. You can see a combination of polish and satin here. And then there is a hexagonal bolt that fixes the bar retaining the buckle on the strap. And that's the first Royal Oak tribute you're gonna see. You're also gonna see another one here. We have another hexagonal bolt, one on each side, that connects the strap to the case. There's a little bar the bolts hold the bar in place. This is not only a nice Royal Oak reference, since hexagonal is the form of the Royal Oak crown as well as bezel bolts, but the twin screws and bar provide more security on the wrist than a spring bar. This is a system that's less likely to give way. So yes, it's nostalgic, but it's also practical. The watch has a wonderful, airy, open, evacuated, prismatic feel to it. Something that gets lost if you're only looking at photos like this on the internet. The lugs are completely open, sculptural, buttress-like presences. You can see that the case itself is recessed in from the bezel and the case back. We have lovely micro-beveling on the edges of these evacuated lugs, and you can see the Beveling is on the outside, it's also on the inside, and it's on both sides, which is just wonderful attention to the details that make this watch. Another Royal Oak reference is the rounded octagonal form of the middle case. You can see those soft crease lines, and that is another nod to the Royal Oak. On the Royal Oak, it was inspired by a vintage diving helmet. That's where Gerald Janta drew his inspiration. Here it's subtle, but it's definitely there. You can see that the Mid case actually bows inward and tucks inboard of the case back in the bezel, and that portion of the mid case is polished, contrast with the satin. We have here a polished bezel that's really quite minimal. You can see it's like a silver halo. This watch is basically all dial and ray hot. Taking a look at the crown side, you see the AP logo. The crown is both polished and satinated, and the rounded rectangular chronograph pushers have their own micro beveling. Again, the attention to detail here is outstanding, and the level of finishing and hand finishing in particular is going to be comparable to what you see on a Royal Oak. Now, taking a look at the dial, you can see it's all black lacquer, which is glossy, clear coated, and bottomless. It looks like enamel. We have a Ray Hot outboard, which is also a tachymeter, a sporty accessory for a dress watch. It allows you to use the chronograph to gauge the speed of, say, a car over a kilometer. Chronograph here is a flyback, so reset and restart with a single push of the trigger. The Ray Holt is quite deep. As you can see, the dial sits far below the tachymeter scale, and then the dial has sunken sub-registers with polished chapter rings for your chronograph minutes, chronograph hours, and then constant seconds. Chronograph features are favored. Those registers are larger for easier visual access, and the watch features gold logo, 
numeral 12, indices, and hands. They are golds. So they will not tarnish or oxidize over time. The quality is outstanding. As you can see, the indices are rounded over their tops, and so are the hands. Creating a lovely vintage look, you would have seen hands like this on vintage Audemars Piguet complications. The Royal Oak Perpetual Calendars, the 80s and 90s, really come to mind. But this kind of rounded hand that has not just length and width, but also height, is reminiscent of something you'd find on a watch by a low-volume craft watchmaker. Now, the watch does have one flaw, in my opinion, and it's not the obvious one. Uh, the date disc features a different font. As you can see, look at the two on the tachymeter on the sub-registers, and then the numeral two. And then look at the two on the date disc. That is not the same font. That is the only thing I feel falls short here aesthetically. The watch also features a hacking seconds function, and there is a quick set for the date. Now, the watch includes the next generation AP in-house chronograph caliber. This movement, caliber 4401, launched with the code 1159, and it's found its way to everything from the 1159s to the Royal Oaks to the offshores. It is a bigger automatic chronograph caliber than what we had in the past. Previously, you chose between a Frederic Piguet 1185, which was thin and fine, but also non-hacking, slow beat, limited power reserve, and not made by AP. Or you could get the modular chronograph, which included a 3126 base, which was an AP movement, but a small one, and a Dubois de Praz 3840 complication module on top. This is a fully integrated, large diameter, modern spec, in-house chronograph caliber from AP. So the caliber has bi-directional winding for smoothness and refinement. They didn't want it to be mistaken for a 7750. Uses ceramic rotor bearings for high efficiency. It winds a 70-hour power reserve. You've got the flyback complication. You have a vertical clutch column wheel chronograph. And if you look, you can see the column wheel is right there. It's black polished and quite crisp. The amazing thing, too, is that if you look, you can actually see the vertical clutch. One of the few watches I've ever seen with a visible vertical clutch. It has a higher beat rate than the previous AP chronograph calibers. This one beats eight times per second. It also has a full balance bridge with a free sprung balance, making for shock resistance, and the free sprung balance can be very precisely adjusted. You have, do again have a 70 hour power reserve compared to the previous chronograph which was 40 hours in the case of the Piguet and 50 hours in the case of the modular chronograph. This movement at over 30 millimeters in diameter is far larger than either of those and makes for a better case back vista. It is a 40 joule movement and it has the advantages of the column wheel which include crisp feel and sound and then the advantages of a vertical clutch which includes seamless step free engagement, no extraneous movement and if you wish you can leave the chronograph running full time because there's no additional wear and tear with a vertical clutch system as opposed to a horizontal clutch. All of this is 30 meters water resistant. You get a good sense of what this watch brings to the table. It's probably the sportiest dress watch made by any of the Holy Trinity members. Really, it does have one foot in the sports watch category and one foot in the dress watch category. But then again, that's sort of what AP does. They like to straddle categories. The Royal Oaks, neither sports watch or dress watch. And frankly, this is likewise. Reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. I should address one question that's often asked about AP white gold. Why is it so much brighter than other brands white gold? Well, the answer is AP uses either palladium, platinum, or rhodium on top of their white gold. This is something that's been done for a long time to make white gold look like platinum. Today, a lot of brands use what's called gray gold, which is darker. It looks more like gold. Uh, this will have to be replated when it goes back to AP, should it ever wear through. Unlikely, but in theory. Uh, gray gold is the same color all the way through, but it is not white. This is extra bright, indistinguishable from platinum. And that is why AP white gold always looks so much whiter than that from other brands. Again, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing.